welcome to Lombard Christian Reformed Church as we gather for our live stream service. We are the Fishers. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold. For the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, graciously hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, for those alone or lonely, and all in any kind of need or distress, Lord, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighborhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for, Lord, graciously hear us. For our help is in the name of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care, for lives saved and lives lost, for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us, to find an antidote, and all the medicine makers. Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers, finding new ways to educate children from afar and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health. Praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless and refugees. Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance at slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, may we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin.
God says, I am the Lord your God who snatched you out of Satan's hand and set you free. Don't make anything more important in your life than the God of the Bible. Don't make toys or fun or experiences or people take the place of God. All good things come from the Lord, not from getting things or getting the applause of people. Don't use God's name unless you are praising or praying to the Lord, talking about God or sharing God's good news with someone else. Speak only about God as the Bible tells you about the Lord, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sunday is different from any other day. It is for worshiping God, sharing life with God's people, resting in our Heavenly Father's provision and grace, and serving others in the name of Jesus. Your mother and father are special gifts from God. You are to respect them, pray for them, honor their witness of God's love in your life, and obey them as they teach you these commandments of God. Don't hurt others with your actions, words, or thoughts. Don't use others for your own wants or needs. Don't take what belongs to someone else, their toys, their work, their fun, their peace, their freedom, or even their test answers. Don't say untrue things about others, and don't abuse the truth to hurt others with things like gossip or being judgmental. Don't want to be like another person. Have what they have, do what they do, like what they like. You are a unique creation redeemed for God's glory. That's your purpose in life. So be content with what God gives you. So love God with all that you are and all that God made you to be. 
You show this best by loving your neighbor and serving her or him to bring out God's best in her or him. Psalm 103 invites us to reflect upon the character of God as our Father. We believe that God is our Father in heaven. We pray our Father who art in heaven. What does that mean for us? How, how does that bless us? And how does that uh, show us something of the truth and the grace of God? Well, Psalm 103 helps us. So uh, I'll lead you in a simple chorus and uh, stop at certain times in that chorus to, to say a few words from Psalm 103, all to give us this space, mm -hmm. this reflective time to praise and thank God, who is our Father in heaven. Bless the Lord my soul. Our scripture reading today comes from Deuteronomy 8. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today, so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these forty years, to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, 
vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. A land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of them. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful desert, that thirsty and waterless land, with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your fathers had never known, to humble and to test you, so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. This is the word of the Lord. There is a land of pure delight where saints immortal reign. Infinite day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. There everlasting spring abides and never withering flowers. Death like a narrow sea divides. This heavenly land from ours Could we but climb Where Moses stood And view the landscape Or not Jordan's stream Nor death's gold flood Should fright us from the shore to be done with the social distancing and stay-at-home responses to this pandemic. 
spent about four months of putting our lives on pause and living without having anything much to look forward to. For many, we have experienced losses, small and great. Some have lost jobs or businesses. Some have lost educational opportunities. Some relationships have been hurt or damaged along the way, and some have even lost loved ones to the virus. What did you lose this year? So it's no wonder we want to carry on, right? I mean, even though infection rates are increasing and we're still not done with this, we want to move forward. Things are opening up around us. Some are starting to visit with friends again. Some are returning to the office or the workplace. Some are taking vacation. And you are asking me when we are returning to church for worship. We're feeling ready to gather again. How do we do that? So that we bring the presence of Christ Jesus into this new space, this time, this new uh, season where we are around one another with all our losses and fears and failings and future hopes still remain. The pandemic journey we have been on is something like a wilderness journey. So there are lessons to be learned from Moses and the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 8. From the Exodus, we learn the truth that you've got to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land. There's something good, healing, something necessary about the wilderness. And I'm hoping that as we reflect for a few moments, you'll sense that and be able in some way to 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 capture the wisdom or the hope that has come as a gift from God to you in this wilderness season. Israel is on the doorstep to the promised land. It has been a 40-year journey out of Egypt and slavery through the desert. No wonder the people are anxious, restless. They can't wait to be done with this journey. But before they do that, the prophet Moses stops them. So they listen to God's instructions for their next phase, so to speak. And Moses says, be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his command. I know we desire to be done with this virus and go back to normal. This was something of a wilderness time for us too. But it's important to receive this pastoral care from the Lord. Listen, as Moses says, be careful how you enter this new land. For we're not going back to life as it was back in the winter. Things have changed. And the need for the love of Jesus Christ is greater than ever. So be careful to enter this new land with the gospel in mind. And Moses says, remember how the Lord was with you through this. This wilderness time, the pandemic season, and the season of protest, both were not outside the providence of God. The Lord has led us in this time also, in the losses that we have endured, in the blessings we have received. In, in these things, we have been invited into a new way of living. So did you receive? Did you notice? Did you receive and respond to the Spirit's invitations during the pandemic? And will you yet, if you haven't, before we rush ahead? And Moses says, for this was to humble and test you. In order to refine us, to change us for the better in our hearts. 
I think we discovered some things and, and some things that surprised us and some things that challenged us, but perhaps some things that in humbling us and testing us have, in a sense, purified us, uh, uh, added to our lives. I mean, did you discover that your schedules weren't as important as you thought? Did you acknowledge finally that you really aren't as in control as you thought you were? How did you depend on the Lord in a new or deeper way during this time? Have you found a new confidence in the presence of Christ, in the reality of God and his commands? And have you thought how there's hope? There's hope for us all when we love God and our neighbor. And now will you continue in those revelations and those practices as we, as we go perhaps away from this pandemic living? Will you continue in these disciplines or are you tempted just to leave them behind and make this new season your season following your agenda? Moses tells the people that it took 40 years of wilderness experience to humble them and to teach them that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord God. God has been merciful for us. It hasn't been 40 years, though it feels like it. But the Lord has taught us, too, that, that we do not live by bread alone, by our own accomplishments, by, by satisfying our appetite. We live by the mouth of the Lord God and all he has given. Now, now that's a special word in verse number three, that word for mouth. It's related to the word that is used in that speech of Moses to remind the people that God took them out of Egypt. And that same root word is used also to describe that, that scene, that experience when the Lord brought water to the people out of the rock in the wilderness. So Moses is doing a word play there in order to emphasize that when he says every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord, he means all the way through. Not just in the good times and not just in the comfortable times, but all the way through the wilderness and the losses and the hurts and the pains and the questions too. God was with them to restore their lives. Standing on the edge of the promised land, the people are taught that their best moments ahead will be when they continue to depend on that leading, that guiding word, that present Word of God in Jesus Christ. And that means using these, these newfound practices, these new understanding that, that we have been given from the Lord. Before we rush in haste to get back to normal, to the way things used to be, can we pause yet to give thanks to God for the wilderness? How will you be careful to enter this new time and season? How will you remember the presence of the Lord with you and leading you through your wilderness? And how have you been humbled and tested in order to have that necessary change of heart so that you exercise new disciplines, new practices according to the commands of Christ? You have to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land. To help us reflect on that, can I get under your spiritual skin for a moment? I'm going to sketch a few possible takes on where each of us may be at right now. And with each take, bring a warning and a caution, as this passage does, to be careful, to remember God's commands, and accept the invitation to a new spiritual practice. Some of us want to go back to the way it was. We see this season that we've just been through as a waste, a conspiracy maybe, all fake or at least blown out of proportion. And our motive is to stay intact. We like our lives just as they are. But Deuteronomy 8 says, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years. 
the Lord was in this time for our good, to change us, to fill our hearts with his commands. The spiritual question we have to ask is whether just wanting to go back to the way it was is resisting letting God bring about something new within us. And we must caution such a reaction because the one unforgivable sin is refusing to acknowledge the Spirit's work in and among us. Am I refusing to see that this was God's time too? Some of us are afraid to move forward. We have let fear overwhelm our faith. And we have to ask, are we still afraid for others or are we becoming afraid of others? That old fear of us versus them. I mean, we say things like, I'd love to get together with you because I know you, but I don't want to get together with them because they're different from us and I don't know where they've been. But we're reminded, Moses says, that we're entering a good land, a good time, another one of God's times. The Lord is bringing you into a good land, he says. And, and the way to live in that goodness is to follow God's command, not our fears. For us, that means following our Savior, Jesus Christ. God with us, who fulfilled the law of God. And he did that as he welcomed sinners, as he welcomed the outcast, as he welcomed the sick, and he brought healing and, and wholeness and belonging, fellowship. Verses 17 and 18 of Deuteronomy 8 say, You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God. And what he's saying there is that having gone through the desert, it will not be a promised land we enter if we claim it merely on our terms. We must do so on God's terms, on Christ's terms. So some of us do acknowledge that change has begun to happen within our hearts. But we already feel the pressure to hide that change. Not to appear different when back in old relationships and communities. We wonder how we'll react if someone says, you've changed. We wonder if the change God wrought in us really is a blessing. And maybe we like the old me better. For we know what we've lost. We know what's been. And we aren't sure we welcome what we have gained. Verse 10, though, says, When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. And by that is an invitation for us to dare risk the old for something new. That is, there does come a time to risk the old, to be vulnerable enough with the old, in order to allow the new that God brings, in order to bring justice and peace. The season has asked us to confess that there are old assumptions that we live with about how the economy works, how neighborhoods work, how my security and safety are assured, that need to be risked. Because if my neighbor doesn't have peace, I don't have peace. Moses reminds them that God provided in the wilderness and God will provide in the land of promise. The lesson about total dependence learned in the wilderness also applies directly to life in the promised land. As Israel prepares to enter that land, Moses looks back and tells them what he hopes they have learned in their wanderings, and they do not forget. They live by God's word. This pandemic has taught us, and the recent protests have confirmed for us that for all our information, we don't have enough wisdom or righteousness to know what to do. 
We're guessing at tomorrow's proper course of action. We can't see, simply teach our children, our congregation, or our citizenry to know the right thing or to act in the right ways. So what's to do? We must help one another to love the right things. And in that change of heart, that change of desire, that change of love, that, that purifying of our love toward a love for God and a love for neighbor, then we will cultivate a right dependence on God that will change us for the better. And the only way to cultivate those right desires is to practice our way into them. So Moses thinks about what they have learned in the desert, what habits, what rituals, what disciplines have been brought to the people as they wandered the desert. And, and he, he says, use those, continue to practice those. And that word is the same for us. Verse 11, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. This season of solitude, stay-at-home time, a letting go of our rushed lifestyles, our living with less and without. This has been an invitation to develop the practices and habits drawing us closer to the commands and will of the Lord. Be careful, says the Lord, that you don't forget these. Do not let those moments and those practices go. Otherwise, you will lose your love for me. And even though you survived this pandemic, a virus still remains in your heart. And lastly, some of us fear nothing has changed. The world for us is as fearful and violent as it ever was before all this, perhaps even more so now. The virus has exacerbated the corruption already in existence. The loneliness and the isolation just confirmed the hopelessness. We can't see how anything good could come out of this Nazareth. So the question we have to ask, we have to do some soul searching and ask, how has this pandemic changed us? Perhaps we have not used this time well. Did the way our schedules change invite us to take up a spiritually disciplined life? And did we, did we, did we ignore that? Did we embrace the solitude, the rest, and the giving up of our frantic paces? Or did we, did, did we resist that? So Moses says in verse 5, Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. And hear that there's still time. There's still time for you to take up some of the practices of the heart and embrace the changes the Spirit is, is longing to bring to you. Time doesn't permit us here, but the last few weeks of the daily soul care, you know, that you receive maybe in an email or maybe you see it on, on Facebook, on our Facebook page. Those, those spiritual disciplines over time will, will shape us in God's command. They will shape us instead of letting the pandemic shape us, instead of letting the, the fears shape us, instead of letting our selfishness shape us. So go back to those. We can't go through them right now, but go back to those. Practice them, for they will cause you to be a blessing to a world both resisting and crying out for change. Deuteronomy 8 ends with a warning. It's an ominous warning, an ominous word, destruction. Three times in two verses, Moses, speaking for God, uses the word destroyed. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed like the nations the Lord destroyed before you. So you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. And in some ways what he's saying is if, if we go back, 
if we resist the lessons learned, if we don't respond to the invitations God has given us now, we'll still be in a season of pandemic, only it'll be a spiritual pandemic. During this time, the world's great needs have been exposed. People go hungry while farmers plow under unsellable, unsellable produce. Farmers drain dairy products because for all our economic progress, we still don't value putting together an infrastructure that will feed the hungry. People get sick and can't get needed treatment because for all our medical skill, we still don't value taking care of our neighbors. Protection and justice are still lacking for people of color because for all our affirmative action and insistence that we are not racist, we still idolize majority culture policy that favors some at the expense of others. And we still don't believe we owe our neighbor the love of Jesus Christ. These exposed needs are an invitation from the Holy God and the Prince of Peace. We are invited to enter this new season carefully, remembering the Lord's leading as the only reliable guide to going forward, humbled and tested, but secure in God's commands fulfilled in Christ. Are we ready to confess that if we do not respond and just hurry to get along with our lives that were so inconveniently interrupted, that we will have nothing to say to the next generation when they ask us about 2020 in our faith. We have been invited closer to God during this pandemic. Find that closeness in what you have been asked to give up and in what you have gained. This pandemic time, though not good, though not of our own choosing, is a time that God uses for our good. If we accept the invitation. God led you, says Moses. Yes, God has led you. Christ has been with you during this time. So be careful to move forward the same way. For you have to journey through the wilderness to get to the promised land. Amen. We've had a lot to reflect on this morning to consider uh, where we're at and uh, to take time to pause just before we rush into our week. Uh, one healthy way to do that is to stop together and unite in prayer. So would you join with me as we bring our praises, our thanksgiving, and our requests to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. Living God, in our hour of need, we turn again to you, for we have nowhere else to turn. We put our faith in you because you have proved your faithfulness time and time again. We reaffirm our love for you because you have never let us go. We thank you that you are not distant from us, but have drawn near in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He has shared our life tasted our death and defeated it. He understands our worries and our fears. Help us to respond as your children now. We pray for healing mercies as this pandemic persists, remembering all who have lost loved ones and praying for those seriously ill at this time. We pray for doctors and nurses and all in the caring professions who work to help and support people as best they can. We remember those working behind the scenes, testing samples, confirming results, giving information to patients. We uphold others trying to understand this virus better and for researchers working to create an effective remedy. We pray for our national and state governments as they work with the best medical advice to guide us on how we should respond and what action we should take. 
We pray that these guidelines might be taken seriously and that all would put them into action. May this crisis bring out the best in us, not the worst. Help us to live by faith and not by fear, to build bridges and not barriers, and to resist all who would speak ill of any others. May we not forget our responsibility to one another, not least to the vulnerable and voiceless in our communities. Help us to find ways of keeping in touch and offering reassurance to those with underlying health issues. For any who feel particularly vulnerable or in danger at present. We pray for those who have been laid off as their work disappears. For financial hardship for individuals and businesses. We remember those who cannot visit loved ones in lockdown care homes for the elderly whose social contacts have been severely curtailed. Help us to find creative ways to keep in touch, to assure one another that none are forgotten or ignored. May we not forget our faith, but draw strength from it. So may our worship be heartfelt, our fellowship deepen, and our service increase. Continue to remember Nick Tooney, Pat Serrano, George Taminga, Rick Hopp, Lenore De Bruin, Lincoln Hain, and Amy Weinert. We pray for those looking for new jobs. We pray for protection for those who work in situations that bring the risk of exposure to the virus. We continue to pray for those with chronic illnesses, those receiving care for mental illnesses, the daily choice some make against addiction, and those battling cancer. We give thanks for the elders and deacons who have completed their term of service and ask for wisdom for our new council as it serves Jesus Christ among us. God of grace and God of mercy, Hear our prayers today. Strengthen us by your Spirit so that we may carry on our lives as best we are able, looking out for others, showing love in action, acting justly and loving kindness as we walk humbly with you, being faithful in prayer, and bringing encouragement, hope, and peace, always trusting in you, our Rock and our Redeemer. These prayers we bring to you in all thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Today's offering is for the Benevolence Fund. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this day that we can give back to you and your church. And we thank you for the Benevolence Fund and that we can help out our church family. Um, Thank you for the many gifts and talents that you've given us to be able to earn money to give back. In your name, Amen.
I know we're anxious to get on with life, and I know we're anxious to get back together and to carry on, but um, I hope today that you have been able to pause uh, with Deuteronomy chapter 8 and listen to what God says about being careful how we go ahead, how we, we go remembering the blessings of this difficult or severe season, how the Lord has shaped and formed us in the image of Christ. And so let us go, if we go, let us go in the blessing of God. May the Lord go before you to lead you. May the Lord go behind you to protect you. May the Lord go beneath you to support you. May the Lord go beside you to befriend you. Do not be afraid. May the blessing of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you. Do not be afraid. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. 